Hey everyone, it's day four. Uh, things are coming apart at the seams. Um, three? Day three? <laughs> I think it's day three. Or maybe day four, I guess it was day three. Uh, we are fueling up for our 47 mile ride. Uh, it's a big day. It's the biggest day I've done um, so far. It'll be 47 miles today, so it's gonna be, it's gonna be rough. <laughs> We just had a meltdown over some wipes earlier. I started crying about some of my turmeric cocoa getting spilled. Ah! I'll be on the bike for the morning, and then I'll be hopping in the Bronco Sport this afternoon and talking a little bit about some of the awesome features this car has for off-roading and other sorts of things to basically get around in this environment out here. We have another 48 miles in front of us, so we're gonna see how well we can hold it together. Oh wow, she's hustling. She wants it. <laughs> she's gonna get it. I feel like I'm in the Tour de France right now. Woo woo! So I got off the bike, I put in about 23, 24 miles, something like that. Um, hopped in the Bronco Sport and let McKaylee get in on uh, the rest of her ride. She was actually having some mechanical issues with her seat. So we uh, quickly fixed that. It was kind of an ordeal. But yeah, we ended up going down this pretty awesome little dirt road. Definitely on the rock crawly side. Um, so I was able to use the uh, rock crawl mode. Uh, it's one of the goat modes on this Bronco Sport. Yeah, it was really awesome. Right as you turn on that rock crawl mode, there's a front camera and you can basically see everything in front of you. So that was really awesome. You know, one of the big things when you're off-roading is being able to pick a line uh, through sections and kind of being able to look ahead and making sure your vehicle's placed is kind of where you want it to be because four to six inches can really be mean the difference between just totally scraping up your bottom and um, just like not having a good time. Um, you know, really a little bit of preparation and planning goes a long way, especially if you're on these dirt roads. So, you know, sometimes that can mean just getting out and taking a look down the road and saying, well, maybe this is not quite enough, but um, you know, this, this was actually really awesome on that little stretch we took it on. So I got a few items here that we've brought on this trip. Um, and they're items that I normally bring when I'm out in this part of the world. Um, it really can just resolve headaches. The first of these is a battery powered air pump. This hooks up to your car battery. Generally you wanna be using it when the car's running. And th these are awesome. Um, they're fairly cheap to pick up as well. The next item, this is a quick start battery starter. What it does is it uh, gives a lot of amperage to basically start your car. So you don't need to jump from another vehicle. So if you're here out alone, this can really be a lifesaver. The next of these items is a recovery kit. Basically what it includes is a tow strap and a few of these linkages. But what this can do is that if you get stuck in the mud or you get stuck in um, sort of a situation that you can't get out yourself, um, you can strap it to another car, uh, another tow hitch, and you can get pulled out. I've actually had to use that on a few vehicles and it's been really, really great. The next item in this is a tire repair kit. This is one that I recommend at least practicing on, on an old tire or if you have access to one, it's really good to at least watch a video at a minimum to see how to use these. But this is a little more advanced. Um, but this is something, especially out here, if you get a large puncture, this can go a long way in making sure you get home at the end of the day. The next, this is simple toolkit. Um, you know, making sure that uh, you have enough coverage. If you have a European or Japanese vehicle, they might be in metric or an American, it'll be in standard. And the last set of items are down here. Uh, these are some of my favorites. These are traction boards. Generally what you use these for is that if you get in a sticky situation in sand or mud, 
You can stick these under the drive tires of your vehicle to pull yourself out. Um, these are really good for self-recovery if you're out alone. Um, they can be a little unwieldy, so it's important, again, to uh, do your homework and see how to use it and hopefully use it before you're actually stuck. And the last two items here, a little shovel. This is really awesome, especially if you have a stuck tire. You can use this to put these sand boards underneath the tire as well. And then last is a uh, gallon uh, gas tank. You know, an important thing to note is that you get one that is designed for gasoline or diesel or whatever your vehicle is designed to run on and that you store it in a way that's uh, well ventilated and um, is in accordance with the manufacturer's specification. So the big takeaway from all of this is thinking about how you can be self-sufficient out in, in this desert environment. Whether that's getting stuck, you have a flat, your battery goes dead, you can handle it on your own. And that's really key out here because in many places out here you might not have cell service and it might be a long way to a nearby town. So as much as you can do to get yourself out of these situations can really go a long way in making sure that you have a good time. So I hope this was helpful. We're gonna be going into the Buenos Aires National Wildlife Refuge and it's gonna be incredibly beautiful. It's one of my favorite parts of this ride. We rode into Buenos Aires National Wildlife Refuge, which is a place that preserves the grasslands to reintroduce pronghorn and, and help the endangered bobwhite quail. And so it's a really huge refuge. Um, and so we spent the whole second half of the day riding through that. And we just had really incredible views of Baba Kuviri Peak to our west. We were just going up and down these undulating, just gorgeous, gorgeous hills, and uh, it was pretty flat. And um, there's no like intense elevation gain or climb, so the the riding itself was relatively easy. And we did get to see an absolute, just gorgeous sunset. That's when your mind kind of gets a chance to expand a little bit.